Interpreting quality control can seem like a daunting task. When you begin to look at data, it can be somewhat overwhelming and trying to wrap your brain around what quality control means and why we use it in the lab can seem like a foreign concept initially. Okay, but just know quality control is used to determine precision and accuracy in our laboratory. Okay, so all control values should be normally distributed about the mean, which means that they fall on each side of that range. If the results are normally distributed, that's referred to as Gaussian distribution, and it's represented by a bell curve. Okay, so Gaussian distribution is used in all sorts of statistical data. Okay, so that is usually just, just you're going, to, the average is what's considered in the middle, and then you have some things that are above it and some things that are below it. Okay, so characteristics of a normal distribution or a bell curve. The mean plus or minus one SD gives us confidence limits of 68.3%. So all that means is that 68.3% of the time, our results are gonna fall within a plus or minus one SD range. The, the mean plus or minus 2SD gives us higher confidence limits at 95.5%. And this mean plus or minus 2SD is actually what we use in the laboratory. Okay. And the mean plus or minus 3SD gives us the 99.7% confidence limit. So when you're thinking of the mean, just think of an X with the bar over the top. Okay. And all that is, is the average. And here it's important to know that 95.5% of all control values will fall within plus or minus 2SD of the mean. And we use LJ charts to help us visualize this. Here's a picture of a normal Gaussian distribution. It shows your bell curve here where you can see it goes in this, this um, direction here. In the middle of all of this, let me erase, in the middle of all of this, you have that same X with the bar over it, okay? So that's your mean. So what this is telling us is that if we would use the bell curve or our, our Gaussian distribution to determine where our results may fall, the plus or minus 1SD range would all fall within this range. So if you see the minus one is listed here and the plus one is listed here. So distributed about the mean on either side of it. Your plus or minus two SD range will fall within this range here. And then your plus or minus three SD range would fall within this range here. Okay, so I could draw this out as well where your plus or minus three would be here. Your plus or minus two would fall within this range. And then your plus or minus one would fall within this range. Okay. And then over here on this side, this actually shows the mean here. Just think of that as being X. So this would be our mean. And then these red data points are the days that we ran QC. Okay, so down here would be the days. You see it starts one, this is 16 days worth of quality control, actually 13 days because it stops here. But all that's happened was they, now you see this bell curve, the same bell curve that I drew over here, that I, that I drew out for you. You have the same one over here turned on its side. So just like we had before, your plus or minus one SD would fall within this range. Your plus or minus two would fall within that range and your plus or minus three would fall within that range. All right. So if I were to use this ruler and highlight this out for you, that is the plus or minus two SD or that's the plus plus two SD. And then this is the minus two SD. Okay. So that's basically saying all of these results that fall here within this plus or minus 2SD range, those are all valid results, okay? So we would use that as our indicator of how well our QC is working, 
If you notice, the only the only data point that is outside of it is this one here. Okay, so that one that day we would have to figure out what's going on with that one QC value, but everything else is falling within that plus or minus two XC range. Okay, so now let's go to the problem that I have for you all. It's a hematology related quality control range. And it says if the mean of the hemoglobin assay is 14.0 grams per deciliter and 1SD is 0.2 grams per deciliter, what is the plus or minus 1SD range? What is the plus or minus 2SD range? The plus or minus 3? And then be sure to give your correct units. Okay, I'm a stickler for units, so make sure you always add those in there. So the mean would be this 14.0 grams per deciliter. So I'll draw that out over here also. Your mean is equal to 14.0 grams per deciliter. And then 1SD is equal to 0.2 grams per deciliter. And then we have to figure out the plus or minus 1, the plus or minus 2, and the plus or minus 3. So I'll use the same colors that I did up there on the top. Our plus or minus 1SD I drew in blue. So the easiest way for you to do this, if you're trying to figure out your ranges, is I figure out what my SDs are first, and then we're just going to add and subtract it from the mean, okay? So always imagine here this SD, just imagine that as being like an X, like you would have in algebra, right? If you're doing algebra, it would be one times X, so it would look somewhat like this, right? The SD is actually abbreviated with the lowercase s, so it would be a one, and just imagine the standard deviation in that, okay? So to figure out our plus or minus one SD, our plus or minus two SD, and our plus or minus three SD, we're going to first figure out what these SDs are, okay? Or what the, the two times or the three times are. So I always tell students, just add that one in and then add whatever number that you have here. So 0 0.2 there, and that is going to give us 0 0.2. Okay, and then just do the same thing for the plus or minus 2SD. Be two times 0 0.2, right? And then the plus or minus three would be three times 0 0.2, okay? So that gives us two, let me actually write it down here, that way it'll make it a little bit easier. Two times 0 0.2 would give us 0 0.4, and three times 0 0.2 would give us 0 0.6, okay? Now, the next step that you have to do is all you have to do is just take that mean, which is 14.0, and we're going to add 0 0.2, and we're going to take 14.0, and we're going to subtract 0 0.2. So that would give us 14.2, and it would give us 13.8 here. So your range would be 13.8 to 14.2 grams per deciliter for your plus or minus 1 SD. Sorry, I ran out of room there. Okay. And then for the, the plus or minus 2, you would take 14.0, and you would add 0 0.4, and you would take 14.0, and you would subtract 0 0.4. So that would give you 14.4, this would give you 13.6. So the range is 13.6 to 14.4 grams per deciliter. So that's your answer for that one. And then the last one, 14.0 plus 0 0.6 and 14.0 minus 0 0.6. So that would give you 14.6 and be 13.4. So your plus or minus 3 SD is equal to, whoops, sorry about that, is equal to 13.4 to 14.6 grams per deciliter. So those are your answers. 
have no idea why I just drew this. <laughs> Those are your answers there for your plus or minus 1 SD, plus or minus 2 SD, and your plus or minus 3 SD ranges. Okay, so if you took this and we used it here on this chart, And we added in that 14.0 right here. Okay, so you see here our plus or minus 1 SD is 13.8 to 14.2. So if you imagine, all we're doing right here is putting 13.8, and this is 14.2. Okay, and then our plus or minus 2 SD ranges from this data here. Is 13.6 to 14.4. And then finally, our plus or minus 3 would be 13.4 to 14.6. Okay. So if you notice, if you just look at this data, where all we're doing is somewhat of a number line. Okay, so if you were looking at slope and intercept with algebra, you would have a number line and on one side of it, it's positive, right? And one side of it is negative. If you notice here, all we're doing is we're going up incrementally by 0 0.2. So it starts at 14.0, we're going up 0.2, we're going up 0.2 and up 0.2. And then we're taking 14.0, we're going down those same intervals. So we're actually getting a QC result that here are these, the th plus or minus three SD ranges are way too wide open. So we would want them in between this 13.6 and 14.4, all right? And then the next thing that I always like to go into is coefficient of variation. So what is the equation for the coefficient of variation? What is this the measurement of and how is it expressed? So here is your equation for your coefficient of variation. All it is is the standard deviation divided by the mean times 100. It's a measurement of precision and it's expressed as a percentage. So let's do this. We'll, we'll use the data that we had up here where we knew that our mean was 14.0 and our SD was 0 0.2, okay? So mean, is 14.0 and our standard deviation is 0 0.2. So with this data, we can determine what the CV is. So the CV would be equal to 0 0.2 divided by 14.0 times 100. And let me, do, let me get my calculator and do the math really quickly. So 0 0.2 divided by 14 would give me This number here, zero, apologies, would give me 0 0.0142 Okay, you don't have to write all that out, but if you punch that into your calculator, then that is the number that you're going to get. And if you multiply that by 100, you end up with 1.42857. You don't have to write all that out either. I'm not a big stickler for sig figs whenever we're doing this. So usually I like to at least go to maybe the hundredth place on something like this, or you could even go right to the tenth place. So, um, and remember it's expressed in a percentage. So this one would actually be 1.4%. That is what your CV is and it's telling us how precise our instrument is. So that means it's only varying 1.4% of the time, which is extremely precise, okay? Anything less than 5% is considered precise. So this analyzer here is falling within our range and it's very precise. It's able to repeat that result over and over again. I hope this helps. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Um, you can drop anything here. I'll leave the video open for comments. And 
I hope it cleared up quality control for you all.